He's Michael Rappaport, actor, comedian. Season three, Netflix Atypical, plays the father of uh, Sam, a teenager on the uh, autism uh, spectrum, searching for love and independence. In fact, Hootie and the Blowfish were just here last hour, and they wanted to meet you at high praise for uh, Atypical. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to be here, Dan. I appreciate the the love from Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. That's probably not your kind of music, though. Not not my kind of music, but I, I respect them, and they're. Uh, I I, re- I like uh, Darius. Is uh, you know he's a big sports guy, so I, I like you know I've talked to him about sports. I want to say. Uh, um, McLovin, that that costume was not just the way you looked in it, your 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 size, the execution, the originality, it, all the, all the praise and accolades that it's gotten yeah. and continues to get post Halloween, totally deserving. Because when you see the Andy Reid video, yeah, so he's thirteen, yeah, and he's, he's the same size as he is yes. now, <laughs> and he and he shows up for the punt, pass, and kick contest. The small kids are behind him, and McLovin came in, and I go, I don't know who he is. And then it hit me, and I went, oh, my God, he's Andy Reid as a 13-year-old in the punt pass. Next year, he should be the kids behind Andy (laughs) Reid, because that was was terrifying. You think about, like, the scar that left on their soul. (laughs) Like, they all thought, I'm going to be in the NFL, and then that happens. Yeah, but when did you realize you weren't going to be in the NBA? I realized I wasn't going to be in the NBA I was 16 years old. I was at the um, iconic, infamous five-star basketball camp. Rex Chapman was was my camp counselor. And during a, uh, a lecture or a clinic from somebody, I looked over at Sean Kemp, <laughs> NBA, who was, who was 17 or, or 18 at the time with a full goatee, and he was six foot nine. And, and I remember looking over at him. And I was like, um, it's it's not going like, to happen. I mean, the, the the size of the guys and this, you know, the gap, I think around 15 changes for 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 boys in sport, uh, uh, the size and the speed. It just goes from I was I was really good. 13, 14 and then 15. You you go outside of New York and you see seven foot 16 year old and Sean Kemp, who I'm looking at. And like Sean Kemp was as good as he was. When he played for the Sonics. <laughs> and I was like, this is so not happened. Then I started thinking like plan B, plan B. I was thinking about Zion Williamson the other day. You know, we always love to do these comps. And everybody goes, oh, he's like Dominic Wilkins and Charles Barkley. To me, there's a little more Sean Kemp in him. I think he's a little bit more raw than than people are realizing. And Sean Kemp, to me, could have been one of the great players in the history of the game. I agree. I, I think basketball came too easy to him. Because he literally was that good, you know. Obviously, I think you know he 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 wasn't he wasn't totally ready for all the the hoopla of being an NBA player. I think there's a little bit of Draymond Green in Zion. I don't think he's LeBron. I think that you know he 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 he's um I I don't think he's gonna be like this guy who controls the ball. I think he's gonna do a lot of things off the ball that are very good. Um, I think that Zion Williamson will like a lot of these players. Uh, they will be, he'll benefit from no hand checking. You can't put your hands on anybody. And I get it, it's a new era and all that stuff, but I feel like the NBA, because you know, like to do all these throwback uniforms and wear the old jerseys. When they wear the old jerseys, they should use like the old rules. I would just like to see, <laughs> and because they're all great. And I don't like to compare because the eras, they're all great. But I would like to see Trey Young with a little hand checking on him. I would like to see LeBron being able to be hand checked. Uh, to slow these guys down for a quarter. You're going to wear the throwback uniforms? Let's do some throwback rules. I mentioned Harden is a more polished scorer than Michael Jordan. Now, I agree. Now, Jordan, of course, would would have developed a three-point shot now if he Absolutely. was playing now. But what Harden does, I get into an argument with Doug Gottlieb all the time because he says Kevin Durant's a better scorer than James Harden because I can put him on the post. He can, you know, he can shoot mid-range. He can shoot. Harden, to me when he's on a roll, is the most unstoppable player in the game. And I'll put him up there with any of the great scorers of all time. I I agree. Because he's got handle, he's got range, he's got size, he can beat you to the hoop, and he's got a great step back three. And I think his game is going, I think James Harden will be uh, in the league for 20 years because he's already plays at his own pace. He's not a high jumper. He is a deceptive first step. But because his herky, he almost plays like an older guy now. Like he's so herky jerky and he's so off speed that his game will age 
very well. Uh, uh, James Harden will be in the league for a really long time. I don't think, you know, knock on wood, you don't want any of the players to get injured, but I don't think he'll he'll have, if he ever does get injured, and I don't wish that on any player, I think he'll be able to come back and still be very James Harden, like because of the off-speedness of his game, which is uh, will age very well. It's not like he's not a high jumper. He's not a dynamic speedster, but like just the way he handles the ball and his keeps you off balance, especially in this non-hand-checking era. Yeah, it's so much a basket. I know the game, Dan. I, I didn't say you didn't. No, I'm just saying I know it. I, I, I like a guy who I could talk real but real sports with because I, I could talk trash, Dan, but I also know the game, the X's. And, they call me an X's and O's guy. Who Who's they? Just Google it. Just say Google X's and O's Michael Rapp. I'm just throwing it out there because I said this the last time I was on the Long time fan. Long time fan. Huge fan of yours, Dan. So I get a little juiced up when I come here. If I could have told you when you saw the national title game between Indiana State and Michigan State, you saw that in person? Yeah. And, yeah. and if I said you could buy stock in Magic or buy stock in Larry? At the time, because I learned to shoot the jump shot, I would have said Larry. Who had a better NBA career? Man. Man, that's neck and neck, man. That's, 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 they, both of them, I think. They both bowed out early. They both bowed out early injuries. They, I mean, I don't know the statistics and all that stuff. They were both, it, it's kind of a tie. They were both sick. But for me, in college, because the blonde hair and, and literally Larry had got me from shooting here to here. <laughs> literally, seriously, when I saw him play, and this was at the time where you didn't watch there was no replay. I was nine. So that game came on, and it was etched in my memory. Those semifinal games in college came on. It was etched in my memory. That changed my life. But the minute Larry Bird, and I swear, my, my father is not one of these crazy New Yorkers who, like, bred me to hate the Celtics. He, he, we never discussed it. It was in my blood. When he put that green uniform on, it was like God spoke to me and said, that's not a good person anymore. <laughs> I swear to God, like, it's not like I was bred, like, you know, you're a New Yorker, we hate to... It's like, when I saw him in that uniform for the Celtics, I, there was no more. And I and I hated Larry Bird, but he changed my life because him and Magic, but really him, because then I, I developed this over-the-head, left-handed jump shot, iconic, of course. Um, he, yeah, just he, ask, Google it. Yeah, go Google that with X. You look a little like you could be in the Bird family. The, the, the best looking bird. I don't know. Say that. That's not a compliment. Say that, Dan. <laughs> Say that. That's I, not like saying you look like you'd be in the Brad Pitt family. Say okay. you look like you could be the best. Say that. You're the most handsome bird brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's still not saying much, but it's, no, it's better than. No, it's not. Uh, the uh, Tell us about Atypical. Atypical season, season three. three. Yeah, start airing today. Um, it's been, um, you know, the show is a very genuine sweet funny but also heartfelt show about a, a dysfunctional functioning family trying to figure out their lives uh, along with the fact that we have a son who's autistic um and it's really struck a chord with with people of all ages and from across uh, uh, the globe um you know it's so hard to do a show and to keep it on the air for three seasons and, and, and this show, you know, I've had people come up to me and, and, and the way they respond to it is just so nice. Um, the character for me, I love playing him because he's so, he's so sort of kind of repressed, emotionally repressed, and he has a hard time articulating himself. And as by, uh, you could tell from this interview here, I, I don't, Dan. Um, so I, I, love the, I love the character. I love the show. And I just, the response that people have had to it has been it's been really overwhelming, to be honest with you. I've had, you know, just like from parents and, and, and kids, and it's a family show, and I'm very proud of Atypical. And, and Atyp season three just started streaming today, uh, uh, the, the day after Halloween, the day after McLovin won Halloween. Uh, season three of Netflix, Atypical, yes. and uh, it's available starting today. When, when you were on Friends. Yes. And, and you were on, what, three or four episodes? I think it was four. Okay, so what do you, what do you remember about how how big a moment was that? You know, how big is, how big was the show at the time? The show was huge. I I think it was the fourth season, so it was a maybe it was the fifth season. I don't remember, but the show was a huge success. Um, 
I knew some of the actors on it. Uh, I knew Schwimmer. I knew Jennifer Aniston. She had just started dating Brad Pitt, who she went on to. Did they get married? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they got married. Yeah. I was at their wedding. I remember their wedding, uh, uh, Brad Pitt, because I knew Brad Pitt from True Romance. Yeah. There was a, 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 a literal, like it was like a huge, it wasn't like a little plate. There was like a spread, like enormous caviar thing, like a table of caviar. And, and I'm such an animal. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm taking it by the feet. You know, I'm not using the spoon. I'm like, this is cr this is like Brad Pitt and Jennifer. Money's not an object. Billy Preston, the late great Billy yeah. Preston performed. Um, <clears throat> they were all super nice. Uh, they were very successful. They couldn't have been more friendly. And, and I enjoyed doing it. You didn't know the show. I mean, you knew it was a hit, but you didn't know it would go on to be this thing that keeps sort of... Uh, uh, being re-seen by children. You know, kids will come up to me, you're the guy from Friends, you know, like young kids, all they know is from the yeah. show. And and you didn't know that, but you knew it was a successful show, so I had a good time doing it. Um, what was your name, Gary? Gary the Cop. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I will say it's disappointing that at the end of the day, Phoebe, played by the great Lisa Kudrow, she didn't choose Gary the Cop. Um, that you, was her You had loss. a make-out yeah, scene, didn't you? I think, we, I think we, ki we kissed. I don't think it was like making out. Cool your jets, Dan. Okay, it's early in the morning. Paulie, Don't get crazy. Paulie, do you have the video of uh, Rappaport? Is I, he making out? He's in for the real Are thing. Are you trying to make out? No, 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 no. I'm not trying to make out. I follow the rules and regulations, Dan. Like, you know, it said go for a kiss, and Gary kisses. I just say, you know, go nuts. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I had to uh, kiss somebody in a movie. How'd that work out for you? Um, I had to kiss Brad Pitt. That's not bad. No, it's not. Uh, no, it was Wendy Covey uh, McClendon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. From, from um, the Goldberg. Yeah, she's a good actress. But I, I wasn't supposed to kiss her. You just did that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's, I feel like I'm a method actor. Like, right. if I think you're good looking, then I just kiss you in the scene. I understand that. Can, can I say, uh, since we've mentioned Brad Google Pitt. Google it. It's called acting. Okay. Yeah, it's, called, it's called acting. <laughs> yeah, Google that. Um, can I tell you something? Uh, last night for Halloween, um, I, I put on a jean jacket. Uh, an old faded jean jacket and I, I thought my costume was dope I had dressed up no one knew what they were like it's Halloween you're not wearing a costume I said I am they said who are you I, I had my jean jacket on and my hair parted to the side and I said I'm Brad Pitt from once upon a time in Hollywood no one got it <laughs> but I, I like the subtle costume uh you know I had the sunglasses on everything no one sort of resemblance between me and Brad Pitt from But if I close my good eye, yeah. then I could maybe see you as Brad Pitt. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. With the jean, I didn't wear the jean jacket today because I didn't want to like because I start look really, really good and I had the glasses and you're like, that guy. Is he too good looking? I don't think you're ever too good looking. I think you're too good looking if you're not a like great Zach Efron. Zach Efron is not the actor Brad Pitt Pitt is. Yeah, but he's still a pretty guy. Very pretty. But Brad Pitt has he, he's proven himself to be a great actor. But he's a, he was so funny in that movie. Excellent. And people never talk about Brad Pitt being funny. And he was really, really funny in that Funny movie. and seamless. The acting was seamless between him and DiCaprio. Seamless. But he doesn't try to, and McLovin brings this topic up, like the term chewing up. What, chewing up uh, scenery? Scenery. Chewing up scenery, Like yeah. what McLovin does. Like, yeah, you were yeah. over here having a conversation. He won't shut his mouth. Yeah, yeah that's like, true. You know, yeah. but yeah, like chewing, chewing up, up scenery. Sc yeah, he does, he's a great actor. And and a great actor is going to play the, the, the tempo the way it's supposed to be played. And he did it, and DiCaprio did it in that, in that film. I just saw The Irishman. Excellent. Excellent. And De Niro, Pacino, and P Pesci. Uh, yeah, but are they making fun of... My people, like I, you know, I get tired of people picking on the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I you mean, might, really, you have to take that up with those guys. Take it up with Joe Pesci. Take take it up with Joe, Al, and Bob. And they're not know. even a. T they're they're Italian. They're Italian. Yeah. Well, what do you want? Are you one of these people like, well, if you're Irish, you got to play an Irish guy? Yeah. Like, real mobsters should yeah. play real mobsters. Or, is that what you're turning into, Dan? Like, oh, well, why did Sylvester Sloan play a boxer? He's not a real boxer. That's a, the, the, the new trend. You got to have, like, if you're playing a guy with one leg, we need, we, we need one, an actor. One legged guy. Or cut your leg off because yeah. you're not. Yeah, I get it. You're being disrespectful. I get it. He's uh, Michael Rappaport, season three, Netflix, atypical, and uh, it uh, starts today. And are you out on the road for doing stand-up? I am out on the road. I appreciate that. I'm doing stand-up comedy. I'm uh, 
I'm going to Portland and Sacramento, and then I'm going to Philly, Boston. All tickets are available at michaelrappaportcomedy.com, but I'll be in Portland. The Big Redhead returns to Portland, a uh, homage to the great Bill, Bill Walton. Walton. Uh, michaelrappaportcomedy.com. I'm looking forward to it. I think you it. get a 32 jersey, go out on stage yeah, in Portland. A little Grateful Dead music. Let's do it, Spark Dan. up a little bit. Let's do it, Dan. Yeah. Let's do it. The old, like the chunky knee, knee braces oh, I with love the that. buckles and that belts. That Portland team. Oh. Is one of the most selfless teams I've ever seen. Did you like? Did did you cover those games? No, but I was I was in college, graduating, and they went down 0-2 to the 76ers. George McGinnis, the great Dr. J. World be free. World be free. And I thought, oh my God, because I had picked Portland to win, and my roommates were from Philly, and then Portland came back and won four straight. It was awesome. I mean, I I've only seen those games in the past, but those games and those personalities, Maurice Lucas. Those were characters, man. And, and I loved Walton. I think Walton understood the game as well as anybody who's ever played it. Physically, he couldn't play it for a long period at that, yeah. that level, but uh, one of my favorite teams. All right, good luck on the road. Good luck with Atypical. Good luck with your Knicks. Why, see, why you got to put... That's no, I'm a saying shot. good luck. That's not a shot. I'm that saying good luck. That's like, you're like, good luck, good luck, good luck, and I'm going to smack you out the door, like the Knicks thing. Why? Okay. Good luck with your Knicks. Okay. Good luck with Atypical. Good luck with your, your stand-up. I don't, I don't feel like... I feel like you're saying with good luck with your stand-up and good luck with your Atypical. That's genuine and sincere. And then when you say good luck with your Knicks, it's like you're, 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 no, you're kind right. of punching me in the face, No, Dan. you're right. You're right. And you got my guy, Willis, and... and, and, and Will, no, you got me. You figured me out. I apologize. It's tough being a Knicks fan. Good luck with a tip. I don't care. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, good luck with a tip. <laughs> good luck with your stand-up comedy. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.